I was in a bomber crew over Europe and we got shot down over Hamburg. I was sent to prison camp. I was fortunate in that the camp I was in, there was a library, and one of the books that I read was The Doctor's Mail. And that was a fascinating book to me because that made me think that, gee, wouldn't it be nice to be a doctor and be able to do those things? And that's how I got interested in medicine. Our first child was born before he went to medical school. And um, one thing that I'll never forget is our trip back to Rochester for him to go to medical school. He had uh, bought a war surplus Jeep, which came, it was brand new, it came packed in a crate, and he had to put the wheels on it and, and uh, kind of assemble it. And then he built a, a top for it, and we just packed up all our belongings and our five-month-old daughter and drove to New York. <laughs> Dr. Koch was a living legend 10 years before I even met him. I didn't meet him until 1968. He was a professor of pediatrics at the University of Southern California. At the same time, he was uh, head of the Child Development Division of Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. And what I remember most about him, before I'd ever met him, was that he started this traveling clinic. And the clinic was composed of four or five professional clinicians who went around to rural areas, Southern California, where the families were, weren't getting any services, and did diagnosis and evaluation and counseling services. Remarkable, remarkable service, and he hired really good people to do this. Pretty soon we found out that there are some rural areas which really have no clinical facilities and that they have many needs for children, their children to be seen by a professional team like us. And this, frankly, proved to be a very, very exciting and challenging experience for all of us as a team. This was unheard of, totally unheard of. And uh, for families, th this was really, you know, they didn't have alternatives. This was a wonderful thing. Uh, that they uh, that they could you know get access to knowledgeable people who could listen to the, their concerns and advise them. He defines what is PKU research, I think, uh, and the quality of life of these people is unbelievable. The whole diagnosis and treatment of PKU uh, in America. I mean, he's devoted his life to the early identification and the treatment of PKU babies. And I mean, many children that would have been mentally retarded weren't. It actually completes the cycle of what he's doing because he dealt with babies with PKU and now with the mothers, and now the these individuals who have been diagnosed with PKU, a lot of them on treatment are really doing remarkably well. You know, some of them are in college and really a normal lifestyle. I mean, thousands of lives have been changed. He just is very good at establishing rapport and, and uh, making people feel comfortable just all around as an excellent physician, clinician. One of the things that uh, I was impressed with Dick was his compassion uh, to uh, the patients that he saw, the children that he saw, and that he took an interest on or were patients that no one else uh, was particularly interested in, and that was with people who had mental retardation and other developmental disabilities. And Dick was probably the, the professional responsible for what ultimately emerged as the system that we have in California. Of course, parents were 
uh, also very responsible, but in terms of a professional who was um, largely responsible for what we, you know, what we see today, that, that was Dick. Well, I think we named the Resource Center, the Family Resource Center, uh, Coke Young, really to honor the partnership between parents and professionals. And I think Dick really embodied that parent-professional uh, partnership early on in his career. He's certainly been um, a leader as far as the development of the regional center system and, you know, the total service component. I think he was uh, very helpful in terms of the parent movement in the early days when they were struggling and doing a lot of things on their own. The most impressive thing that I remember is he had this great ability to hire good people, to train them, to mentor them. Dick is a leader and a motivator and a, a direction finder and always willing to help and always willing to pitch in. And he's a wonderful man to sit and talk with. Well, I would say he's uh, probably the best boss anyone could ever have. Uh, he's a real humanitarian as far as the feeling for the family and for the child. Um, he's brilliant. That was always Dick's gift, uh, to be able to uh, see the humanity uh, of every person and to be deeply respectful of it. We worked hard, but we also played hard, and that was, uh, I think, what Dick does. Uh, we love to go to the mountains. We've, um, throughout the years, uh, done backpacking in the Sierras. We still go cross-country skiing in the winter. He loves to go fishing, and I know about a thousand ways to prepare tuna. We've had a wonderful life together. We've done a lot of things that we have really enjoyed, and I think that we have done uh, some good things for other people as well as for ourselves. Dick has done just amazing things uh, for many, many people. The impact of his vision, his understanding has been absolutely tremendous. I'd, I'd like just to say, Dick, thanks so much for all that you've contributed to so many of us. Dick Koch, I just want to say to you, you're one of the most impressive individuals I've met in my life. Uh, you truly are a mentor to me and a friend, somebody who I look up to. You've really changed uh, the world and it's a better place because of you. Thank you.